What's going on everyone? It's your boy Maddie Light, aka Whole Family. And I'm Nick Cato, aka Wandering in the Wasteland of Boston. Yeah, so this is going to be our new game type hosting ish thing for me. So we're calling it Get Hyped. That's the name I want to go with. And I think Get it's Hyped. Get okay. hyped. All right, I like it. I and like if it. we want to change it, we will because we don't give a fuck because we're YOLO and we're wild card and we're whole families. So, anyways, Get Hyped is going to pretty much be us talking about a game that came out. And again, we're not going to be able to get early access to these games, so we can't do it early. But we're going to go and spoil. This is going to have no restrictions. This is just us talking about Fallout. So if we say something spoilers. that you might have had, yeah, I mean, we're just going to go okay. gung-ho. Okay. We're going to say anything we've seen. This is all uncensored. No raising our hand. This is a spoiler moment. This is spoiler shit. So be ready. Spoiler will be in the title. Spoiler. So you know. But this is mostly going to just be about our experience with the game so far. And this is obviously only going to be a couple hours. Sometimes it will be 10 hours. Sometimes it will be an hour. We don't know. Because that's how crazy we are. We're a crazy ten bunch of... 10 hours, you just said? We could have put in 10 hours. Like, for you. you oh, no, I, know. I thought you said... That, oh, my God. No, not for the video. video. 10 hours, like, Jesus Christ. What the fuck are we talking about? We're just here? that crazy. Damn. So, what better game to... Hold on, man. I gotta, I gotta get right, the plugs out of the way, I guess. So, I'll do the plugs. Remember, if you want to watch all of our videos... You're already where you need to be, either on the blog at livethroughgames at blogspot.com or on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash livethroughgames. You can email us your questions at livethroughgames at gmail.com. You can like our videos, subscribe to them, follow us on everything like Twitter at livethroughgames and at Katostrophic and on Twitch at Katostrophic and Matt Wildcard 1990 on Twitch and all kinds of things. You can even email me on my personal email at mkato at hotmail.com. And me and Matt Harnig at Yahoo.com, M-A-T-T-H-A-R-N-I-G.com. I'll have it all up. You'll see it all in text on the screen. So that's what it is. And we're going to go in and uh, talk about Fallout 4. Let's dive now, right in. So, basically, I got, I got some facts about Fallout 4. We're going we're gonna to get in. We're going to talk about, let's start with Fallout 4 reviews, how the people and the world and the critics are reviewing. They're seeing this game and right let's now. be obviously, well, before we do that, Let's talk about when we first heard about the game first, before we get into the all right, This is all I wanted. This is what I want to do right. first. From its starts. It was a, it was talked about at Bethesda's E3. This is when we talked this is when it was debuted. Everyone, because it's the internet, was already pretty much like it's Fallout 4. They I even think were pretty much caving at it and saying it's Fallout 4. But the hype was still there. That's what everyone wanted to hear. Even them saying, hey, we rebuilt Doom and we did our own thing. But that, let's be real, everyone was there for Fallout 4. So, how did the world view it, I guess? Let's see. Fallout well, 4 is getting say, announced. Number one, they announced, they revealed a game the way either you should reveal a fucking game. Don't show me a game three years before it fucking comes out. They said, we know you're fucking working on Fallout. We know they were working on it. They just didn't say a word about it. No one said a word about it until literally... I think the day before the first official thing, they put the Please Stand By logo, which is like the big Fallout thing, which will probably be the picture for Ooh. this video, if I'd have to guess the little thumb caption note for it. But um, basically, they revealed it, they said, hey, this is Fallout 4, it's coming out in six months, get pumped for it. Here's not a little trailer, here's a trailer with gameplay and just features on features, and they're like, here it is. Like, you like Minecraft? Build your own fucking city. You like this? Do whatever you want. And I was just sitting there like... Okay. So yeah, the world was very hyped. They, they won E3 just because of that, in my opinion. Like, every, that's basically what everyone just thought. They said, well, not counting Bethesda who won E3. They won E3 just because of that. So, now, you personally, how did you see it? What, what kind oh, of impact did it have? Everyone, if you watch this show, which you do if you're watching it, you would know, or our other shows like Podcast Reloaded, you would know that Bethesda Game Studios is my favorite developer. Developer team of all time. Todd Howard's my hero, and Pete Hines, all of them. They only make two games. Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Elder Scrolls and my favorite Doom. game series. And they Doom. Doom. 
Bethesda games who do the do Doom. They're part of it. They're part of the company. They're part they're of with Bethesda, AIDS. but they're not Bethesda Game Studios. It's not just Bethesda. That's the developer. Oh, okay. Team. I don't know. That's shit. like Naughty Dog. Don't listen. It's to like me. Naughty Dog. But um, they're my favorite developers. And Todd Howard's my hero, and every time he comes on to talk about anything on screen, on, on stage, I'm like, i got to give this man my full attention because he's a genius. So Fallout is one of my favorite games, Fallout Except 3. Except what happened to Elder Scrolls Legends? I still haven't heard anything about that card game. We will. Don't worry. <laughs> but anyways. Basically, Fallout 3 is in my top 25 games of all time. Very low end of my top 25 games of all time. And, and that's not a cut to it. love this game. I love Fallout. So when this happened, I said, yes, I'm waiting. So I'm, I like New Vegas, but it's not a Bethesda Fallout, so I'm, it's fucking muddled. It's dirty shit right there. So, it's tainted, as I used to say. But it's been seven years since Fallout, uh, Fallout 3, and five years since Skyrim. So I'm like, fuck it, I was thirsting, I was parched for a Fallout game. Or an Elder Scrolls game, and I knew it was coming, but when I finally saw it, I was just like, yes. I was watching it with my friend Andrew, and I'll never forget it. He was not a fan of Fallout or anything, and he's like, I don't really give a shit about this game. After the trailer, he was like, all right, day one. That's game of the year. And now he's playing and he's texting me. He had to work today, and he was like, oh my god, I can't go. And he's loving it and everything, but yeah, we'll get to that. The hype was real. And I, that was one of my most... So you were one of the fan boys oh, and girls. Oh, my God. I was going like, ooh. And that's the only noise I made the entire time. And then, that was funny. Because they showed all the gameplay, and I was like, I'm in, I'm in. And then the trailer kept going. And they were like, build your forts. Like, your own freaking sanctuaries. People move in. You do this. You gotta defend it. You gotta help the people. You gotta, like, get food for them. Resources. You can set up pipelines for trade between your settlements. I'm like... What the hell is it they're showing? I was like, this is, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, And they're like, oh yeah, it's completely optional. You don't have to do it. I'm like... And then they're like, here's all the ridiculous gun modifications they show in the trailer too. I'm sitting there, I'm like, you could literally make a gun, like, a turn a rifle into a pistol. It's like, alright, I love it. So, it was just, the trailer was just everything you'd want a trailer with the exact, just, that's how you announce a game. It's like six months, the perfect amount of time to get hyped, get the little news out, trickle, get the little trickle feed of news out, and just drop it. And that's what they did. And it's fucking, it was amazing. It was a great moment. Okay, well, see, this is why I like this hype. This hype idea I thought of, and Nick was on board with. Because you guys were all assuming, oh, they're fucking Fallout. Oh, who doesn't like that? That's just it. Not every hype game we're going to have is as hyped as the other is. Me, I'm not a huge fan of Fallout. I wasn't, and when I saw the video, I wasn't impressed to the extent that everyone else was. I don't think Fallout's a bad game. I like it, I'm playing it. I think it's I think it's our I think it's good, but I don't think it's as great as everyone puts it out. And when I saw it, it was just like it's Fallout 4. I know what it is in the world to the world. And I know that it's a huge game, and I'm not discrediting anything from it, but it's just not my game 100%. It's not my game to the extent people bring it. It's not like this this grand adventure I get to go on and experience, and I just, you know, I'll never have another one like it. Like, that's not what this game brings to me. It's a game I find very casual, a game that I feel like, I was like, oh, I could see myself losing a couple hours into this game. Will I beat it? I don't know. Will I put a lot of hours in? I don't know. I don't. I mean, from I, I don't know. So when I saw it, it wasn't even the game I was most hyped for that Bethesda brought out that day. It was Doom was mine. But I'm a huge Doom fan. Nick's a huge Bethesda fan. He loves those games. So it's not for everyone. And again, I'm not saying I didn't like it. And I'll go into how I'm doing with it playing it, such as what I'll go into. I'm not going to go on as long with Nick because, like I said, it didn't wow me like it did then. So, anyways, so now we're going to go on and we're going to talk about the reviews of how the world's looking at it as it came out, which is Nick's doing right now, which we're going to talk about maybe some reviews. And me and Nick, I know there's people who are like, oh, come up with your own opinion, but. These people do these things for a living for uh, to well, us, I, I and we know. like. Well, yeah, we do. I write. Reviews. We have our own opinion, but we take what reviewers say, 
a lot. Like I can't. I I I'll speak for myself. Nick can say whatever he wants. I take what I see in reviews because 99.9% .9 of the time they're right in my opinion like I see what they see and I'm not saying I haven't had my own opinions on things but um, most of the time they they they're they're not bad reviews I'm like I said I'm obviously everyone has agreed to disagree with some things like for instance in Fallout me and Nick both agree we don't see these bug crashing flaws in this game. I know I've seen some frame rates, but I don't see like these like terrible flaws that they said with the bugs are going on. But we'll get into that. So anyways, I'll leave it to Nick. He'll tell you how the world's viewing it, how gonna, reviewers are viewing it. I'm going to talk about the review roundup from GameSpot, the Metacritic score, just a little fun interesting fact, and two tweets from people in the games media that caught my eye. And I was like, okay. So starting with GameSpot's follow for review roundup, Written by Tamor Hassan. Hassan, sorry, I fucked your name up, man, sorry. So basically, here's a review roundup how everyone's seeing it. GameSpot gave it a 9 out of 10. From Peter Brown, saying Fallout 4 can be an intoxicating experience. You are often forced to sacrifice something, a relationship, a lucrative opportunity, or your health to make gains elsewhere. And deep down the rabbit hole you go, the more you want, you wonder. What if you chose a different path? You second guess yourself, not just because you had no other options, but because you aren't sure if you did the right thing. The fact that your decisions stick with you after walking away from the game is a testament to the great storytelling at hand. Fallout 4 is an argument for substance over style, an excellent addition to the revered open world series. So now I have a 10 for game spot. I'm actually I'm not going to read all of them because that's so long. Polygon, 9.5 out of 10, saying you loved it. Game Informer, 9 out of 10. Eurogamer gave it a recommended. Video Gamer, 9 out of 10. Destructoid, 7.5. So I will read this because this one's out of the blue. So, from Chris Carter from Destructoid. After spending roughly 40 hours with the game, I can safely place it somewhere in the middle of Fallout 3 in New Vegas in terms of quality. A lot of the franchise's signature problems have carried over directly into, the, into Fallout 4, but all of its charms have come along for the ride as well. It manages to do a whole lot right, but the story drags at times and glitches. Glitches never change. End quote. So, then PC Gamer, 88 out of 100. Games Radar Plus, 5 out of 5. IGN, 9.5 out of 10. PC Games N, 8 out of 10. The Gymquisition, 9.5 out of 10. US Gamer, 4.5 out of 5. RP Gamer, 3 out of 5. So, pretty much. All good reviews. The general view is that this is relatively unanimously positive. Yes. Um, even 7.5 is considered positive. It's good. It's um, a good score. So, were we surprised? I think it's safe to say no. Is this game, does that mean this game's for everyone? No. But it's still a game I would even still recommend to someone. If someone said, Matt, what do you do you think that Fallout is worth a buy? Hell yes. Fallout 4, fall, any Fallout, for, I only speak from Fallout 3 and on. All of those games are a good recommendation. I totally recommend those games because despite my small things I don't like about it, that doesn't mean it's still not something that most people will find interesting. And Western RPGs is still a great genre. I still love them. I'm, I love the Elder Scrolls series a lot more than I do in Fallout. But see, the thing is, I'm also a big hater of... A post-apocalyptic world. I don't like destroyed, diseased, desolate areas. I, I, I'm not saying that they didn't do a good job on uh, making the world fit. I mean, it definitely feels like a post-apocalyptic world, but it's just not my style. So that is one of my major flaws about the game that I don't like, and it's just that's they, and that's a big theme for it, and that's a big theme I don't like. So, it's just it's already going towards not being something I'm interested in. And as far as gameplay, does it own up to Halo? No. Like as far as FPS, does it own up to Destiny? No. Does it? Is it an okay FPS? Yeah. I mean the goose shooting's pretty good. Yeah, I've had some. I have FPS. some like. I've had some like minor problems where I've shot and I'm like really it's like this it can be a little finicky a little bit the the vent thing or what is it called 
that's that's that is awesome. I love that. I will always. I still this day blowing someone's head off is freaking awesome in that game, and I like the whole critical margin. And sometimes when you're fighting ghouls and things like that, it's like oh maybe you don't have to go for the head. I mean you got a 95 percent shot shooting that dude's leg off. That worked too. My phone. Oh. So I'll just uh, go ahead because Nick will go all day on how he thinks of it, and he'll. Yeah. Before before I do though, I'm gonna I'm just gonna finish up a little review thing. I'm gonna do the Metacritic scores for each of them and just give you context. I'll do what Fallout Three did. Uh, Fallout Four on PC. I did cut you off, didn't I? You did, but it's okay. Fallout Four on PC has an 87 right now on Metacritic. Fallout Four on PS4 has an 87 as well, and Fallout Four on Xbox One has an 88 right now. And for context, Fallout Three on PC has a 91. Xbox 360 it has a 93, and PS3 it has a 90, and New Vegas has an 84 on PC. So there's that. Then uh, two tweets that caught my eye. One was from Brian Altano, IGN. He said, 25 hours into Fallout 4, and I'm leaving disappointed. Big world, fun ideas, bad load times, quests, frame rate, freezes, glitches, and story. I thought about that. I was like, eh, maybe. And one more tweet that Mitch Dyer, IGN. 20 plus hours in and Fallout 4 has me mostly bored. I like some story threads in combat, but I find myself invested in very little. I find Fallout 4 impressive, interesting, and entertaining, but only ever one at a time. Nick Valentine, though, is my favorite. So, the game is not without its criticisms. And as big of a Fallout fanboy and Bethesda fanboy as I am, I'm going to be completely honest when I talk about this game right now, which I think we're on that top segment, right? Yeah. So, yeah. We're going to talk about the game and how we feel, feel about it. I'm about eight hours in. Um, did I ever find myself being a little bored playing the game at times? Yes. For a little bit, in the beginning, when I didn't really have much, I was a little bit. So I was like, eh, I can see it. But once it opened up more to me, I started liking it. Have I ran into these glitches and game? I have ran into like, And when I say the frame rate drops, it's honestly only happened to me like once or twice. And I've been playing for eight hours. I'm not running into these game-breaking bugs that everyone's saying, like, just crashing their PlayStations and shit. I'm not running into that at all. Given what I got from my PS3 on Skyrim, yeah. I feel like they're there, probably. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm, not, like, I'm not running into that. The story, as far as the story, right now it's just... It, these games, with Elder Scrolls is one of the examples as well, it's hard to keep up with the main quest. Because you're doing so much. You're invested in so many stories. Like... Because it's not just little like side quests like, hey, go fetch this freaking thing. It's like, you when you join a faction, you're like involved with the people there and you get a connection with them. And so it's hard to keep track of the main story, but so far I'm not like, do I think, because this is spoilers, I can talk about it. Is the story a little like, would, when you get in, like the uh, nuke drops, you go into a vault, which ends up being like not just a regular vault, it's a vault where they're testing uh, cryogenics, like freezing people. And you get frozen, and then uh, you wake up, I don't know how long into your thing, but you wake up, your wife gets shot, and they take your infant son, who's not even one years old, and you're like, oh, and you freeze again, and you wake up, everyone thinks dead. When you get out, you find Codsworth, and he says, oh, 200 years have passed. And you're like, okay. Is it? a little, like, I need to find my son, like, the first, like, four out, like, four or five, like, four hours of the story, it's like, you find, you already, literally, like, the first guy you ask for help, you find the guy who kidnapped your son and killed your wife. Is that a little, well, I've read, is that I've a little, read, oh, I've read up on stuff, or well, I'll cut go, you right there, I'm not ruining, like, anything, saying, don't, they say there's more to it than just I know your kid. It. Yeah, I, oh, I know there's more to it than your kid, but I'm just saying, like, is it a little convenient? Yes. Is that really logical? No. That wouldn't happen that fast. But characters are fun. The main thing I really like about this one more is I love the voice acting in this now. Because I feel like my character is actually not just a hollow. I yeah. really, really like it. I love the dialogue options. And yeah, I, the, I love the companions. Like Codsworth's funny and Dog Meat's useful and Piper's good. Those are both, and uh, Nick Valentine's, I haven't got to use him yet, but I just now started using him as a companion. But, um, now, like, some of the things I do like, like, they really did upgrade the FPS and shooting mechanics of the game. It's 
ten times better than Fallout 3. Like, you don't have to use your bats all the time. I don't use them all the time. I use them for a little bit. But it's really good. And I don't find myself not being able to aim at things. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's not as good as Halo. Like Matt said, yeah, you're right, but that's it's not just an FPS game. Because you can play a third person. It doesn't even have to be an FPS. So... Well, that could be said about Destiny. Destiny's not just an FPS game. Yeah, but the main thing is... She's like, I don't know. But um, you can't play Destiny not FPS. Which is the thing I'm saying. Thing. Well, you can, you can play, play third, third person. You can totally you want to look at it. You can like play like gear style, sure. sort of. Except not cover based. But that's good. I do think that um, the new upgrade system with your leveling up, it's a little much. The whole chart of things to put your uh, skill points in, it's, it's a it can little be overwhelming. It, it's a little. Because I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm sitting there trying to read through all the things to figure out what I want, and some of them you can't get until you max out like the top three. I do like that when your special was its own thing. So. But again, it's just something I'm getting used to. Now, I'm sort of feeling out what I want. I want charisma, because you need that. Because, like, talking to people is, like, big in that game. So, it's not without its complaints. Do I like it as much as I liked Fallout 3 at this point? No. Do I think I will end up liking it more than Fallout 3? Yes. But again, it's just time will tell. It's just a good game right now. And, like, I mean, even with its complaints, I, let's uh, let's. It's good. Now that we're talking about, we're comparing Fallout Three and Fallout Four. A big thing, and I, I, I think Jowd given, I my answer is yes, but I'll give, I'll say it for all shits and giggles. Do you think it will outsell Three? Yes. So yes. That Three is it. Speaking of that, let me drop this out really fast. Fallout Four is the top game on Steam in terms of concurrent players right now. More and that's people, gonna, more people are playing this game than Counter Strike or Dota Two. That's that's huge. You want to know where this huge. game is going to shatter? It's going to shatter on PC. That's it's, where this and game... even consoles now too, because you're, there's going to be mods. Let's be real, level. Nick. PCs people are, are mods play already, play already there. on Fallout 4 for PC, which is funny. Like that graphics yeah. updates and stuff. Then oh yeah, that's the other thing we should talk about. The graphics. People are like, oh, the graphics suck. Are the graphics better than like Witcher? Well, this Something is you. So you just say yeah. all your shit. Are the graphics better than Witcher and like other games like that and like infamous Second Son like? games that I'm really coming to mind that are like great graphics. No. But it's okay because that's Fallout style. And for, I know the Witcher thing, there was tons of, I, we all know my qualms with Witcher 3. But it's a great game, but it's not perfect, like gameplay wise and mechanics. If you gave Fallout 4 like amazing fucking streamlined graphics, you want to talk about frame rate issues now? And bugs? Can you fucking imagine? Well, if you got that two thousand dollar computer, you could. Play okay, it. yeah. Well, it looks good on older settings, I'm sure, on the computer. But like, could you imagine if they gave that game like fucking uh, just ridiculous graphics? It's like, so it's just Fallout style. That's the that's always going to be the Fallout look. And for all the people saying, "Oh, it looks the same as Fallout 3, no, it doesn't. Don't be fucking dumb. It doesn't look. It's this game could not oh. run on Xbox 360. You just look at something as simple as how the how the characters interact. interact. <laughs> the the Peter, what's her name? Piper. The Piper. The way she acted when she was trying to get into Diamond City was so much better than just the "What are you doing here, stranger?" Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I think people, that's right. See, like, there's a lot more facial features. Things, just like with people talking about like these games that you say look bad. My prime example using this Rezo gun. That game can't run on PS3 or Vita. They had to make ports of that game so they run it. That's just because of colors. Like this game has no chance in hell of running on old gen systems. So that's it. And then the other complaint I saw people saying, um, someone pieced together the whole map. And they said this map's not as big as we expected. Still pretty damn big. Like, I've been playing for eight hours. I'm not I didn't even cover like that's something Smart. I never understood about gaming in general, is people always think that, like, bigger is better. It's like, not. they always think that, oh, uh, Oblivion better, or when you played Oblivion, Sky, Skyrim better be twice the size of that. And I don't even think it was bigger than uh, Cyrodiil. Tamriel? No, Cyr Cyrodiil. So, it's Skyrim was like, honestly, I don't think it was. I think it was a little smaller. 
but it was like warm. But there was the other features that made that stick out towards it. But anyways, like I can't remember what Fallout 3's map looked and how big it was. My prime example again. I'll use Witcher as an example. That is the prime case of a game that has too much. It's too big. There's too much to do. Like, that's why whenever we were talking about Witcher before, and I always brought up Fallout. Fallout's got its fair share of good quests. Witcher has a lot of bullshit quests and a lot of quests that you feel like you're not advancing anything. I will take Fallout's, like, 80 quests, 80, 90, whatever the fuck. I, I'm just spitballing. I don't really know how many quests there are. But I'll take their deep story-driven quests that take a long time over tons of little bullshit quests. And I'll take a smaller map that's just filled with things that are just interesting to go to. Because, just like with Witcher, they're just, you're just riding on a lot of just empty fields and stuff like that and forest and stuff. I will take a smaller, more condensed map that's easier to navigate, which has fast travel too, and everything. With just, it's just filled with things to go see and explore. Like, there, there's a little, like, uh, compass on the bottom of your map. There's, there's constantly icons on there, be like, hey, there's a new thing to discover over here, over here, over here. North, south, east, west, there's stuff everywhere. So I'll take that, like, Fallout 4, the map being small, like, smaller than people expect. It's not a big deal. It's by no means a small map. So let's, let's tone down the small map thing. Um, so, are you done or you got more? I'm, I'm good, that's what I think of Fallout. It's, an amazing game. All right. Well, first I'm gonna just go ahead and, you know, uh, just go ahead and say, is, do I think Fallout Three is better than Four? No, I think Fallout Four is better than Three mm -hmm. already. Like I think it's better. I already feel like as far as being immersed, I feel like I feel like though the whole I don't like post-apocalyptic worlds. I. Despite all that, I've all the miniature stuff, things like the armor upgrades, the building, the sanctuary house, the world, um, finding finding all the different kind of like intense moments in the world with like all the type, uh, all the different kind of like side quests that you can just accidentally run into and don't even mean to. I feel more like when I played Fallout 3, I was more like I just want to beat the main story. I don't have any drive to play anything other than the main story. And I beat Fallout 3. And um, it was alright. It was great. But like everything that happened in the beginning for Fallout 4, I know some people are like, oh, it was just a huge 15 minute thing. I just wanted to get into the world. No, like the I loved it. I. I felt like out of all of the Bethesda games I've played, I feel more immersed in a story is this one. And I'm not saying that's a big feat. I'm not saying that's, like, huge for me. Like, trust me, I'm not sitting, like, story isn't the... the story to me isn't what Fallout's about. I don't feel like you get the experiences of Fallout from the story. It's the experiences you make yourself through the game. How you interact with people in your own way. What the decisions you choose to do, the cho the consequences you have to face because of your own personal things, and you can literally go shoot up some guy for the hell of it. Right. And it's like, that's the kind of thing. So something as stupid as like I'm watching on IGN where the guy was using a spike baseball bat and was just home running people all and like stuff like that. Like, like that's what it's about. Yeah, like I always say, with uh, Bethesda Both games, you fall game, it's more true. the journey, not the destination. It's more of just wandering around exploring. If I, do I feel like I'm going to get some convoluted story that beats out Final Fantasy's stories or, you know, Persona 4 to me? No, that's not what I'm going in for. That's not my expectations. I'm not going into this game thinking this guy's going to blow me away with a story. Can this story be good? Yeah. But that, like I said, it's... You think. you you got to think about it. Like Nick said... Witcher's best, best moments were its personal story, which means they severely lacked in their and their side quests. They weren't that great. They had some of the main, of them. Their main the main character guys, like when you dealt with Trish or when you dealt with uh, I don't even remember all their names. But when you dealt with the main cast of people and you were doing side quests with them, that was a little fun. That was a little exciting because it was people you gave a shit about. But see, the thing about this game, it's different. Fallout 4, yeah, though its main story isn't great, there you gotta think of all the stories they're making. So if I get one shitty 
main story or it's not the greatest, but I get a million awesome side quest stories that are just great and fun and interactive and like missions are tight and like the the combat you get into Character because of it. As well. Yeah, the, the, the way you immerse yourself with those people, like though that's awesome. Like even in Elder Scrolls, I never thought the main story was like I, that was probably the least thing I was interested. In. I was interested in what I was doing in the and the Brotherhood Guild or the the Thieves Guild or the all those kind of guilds. Those were the ones that I was most interested in. I mean, some were better than others, but that's what it is. It's like, there's, yeah, if you think it's like, oh, the main story sucks. Oh, I'm sorry. Did those other 16 quest missions suck? Well, guess what? If you didn't like that one, someone's going to say they did. Someone's going to say that mission was awesome and they felt something for it. Someone's going to say working for the Minuteman's missions was the best part of the game. That's just it. Fallout has... A variety. Just because it's not the main story doesn't mean that it has Bro, to be the great, the greatest example, story. Prime example of that. I forgot the name of them. I think it was like Brotherhood of Iron, or I forgot the fucking name of it. It just happened. Oh, like, I just did a main it. quest. Yeah. And I'm just walking out this fucking giant fucking blimp, like shooting like battleships. That came out. They're like, hey, we're just we're not doing anything up here. I'm like, and I got a quest. Just like, hey, go search this. I'm like, Fuck yeah, I'm gonna drop the main quest and go search that fucking blimp. Yeah. You're goddamn right I'm gonna do that. And like, that's what Fallout does. It makes you want to get sidetracked. Now, for me, that's, I'm usually like, if I, like, so that's why I don't go in there thinking this Mary story better be fucking badass. Because guess what? That's not their focus when you go into that game. Their focus is do what you want, and Story's that can't be. Bad. That can be, hey, go to that story, go do that story, that's what you're into, the game and then that's what you want, that's what you do, and that's what Fallout gives you, that's what these Western RPGs do give you. you want. You do it, you, you, if you want to just, you say, you know what, fuck the stories, I just want to go explore, explore exactly. everything, or I want to go and collect stuff just to build my base, they're letting you do that, you can do that. Is it wise to maybe do some missions? Yeah, it gives you better up experience and things like that. Yeah, but that's the whole point. I mean, do they a, make it very rewarding. Do a few main quest stories. The side quests, quest, the side quests, and all those those are rewarding. When you, when I, so far every big quest I finish, and I haven't done many. I haven't done as many hours as Nick. I felt like I really got a reward for it, even if it was just a like a, a kind of a tutorial. Getting the power armor was a reward. Oh, you felt awesome. like. They're like, this is it. You want to see what you can do with it? Go down there and fight this legendary draw Death claw, Death, Death claw. claw. And it was like, oh shit. And you just see, this is what it's like to be a powerhouse in the power and armor. And you can use it anytime you want. And you got a minigun. You can use it anytime you want. Yeah. My strength's high enough. I don't need the suit to use the minigun. But I barely put any yeah. strength. But, um, so yeah, and it's like... As far as the leveling up, I like it. I mean, it's a little overwhelming, and I and I when it comes to those things, I start getting pretty anal about what I want to put my my points in, and I get edgy and I start wanting to look up like good ideas and like trust me, I looked up beginners on who they say you should get and all that stuff, and that's why I get worried. But I like that it's like it's like do whatever you want, make it however you want to build your guy specifically. Like maybe they've gotten a little too specific instead of like. A set of like Elder Scrolls, like Elder Scrolls, uh, Obliv or Skyrim's way of building was my favorite. Yeah. It was like, but just like it was like you could tell hand, you could build hand. it any way you want. You could do destruction magic in one arm and it one sword. Point. But it's like it still it still broke it up into like a build. So it's like the rogue style build was in its own section, and it was like those are usually the things you want. You can put some stuff in a two handed sword if you want. But this is you. They gave you. They kind of gave you a safe guide, and then when you're more advanced, then do that. And that's my final thing. And this is what I'm going to leave out on. I know. See, I'm praising the hell out of this game, and I just think it's just it's Fallout. That's it. And that's not a knock. It's not a knock to say it's Fallout. Is it the game that I think? Is it as great as everyone else puts it on? Do they put it on this pedestal? Yes, I think they do. But that doesn't mean I think it's terrible. I think it's a great game. It's enough to make me lose myself in. Um, but all in all, I think Fallout is something you don't get in one playthrough. It's something that you feel like you have to get in multiple playthroughs, which I don't have to want to put the time in. But for other people, it's making um, a bunch of different I'm characters. Put hours plus in this game. And I'm sure some of them might even go to a second player because yeah. like some people be like, well. 
maybe if I made another guy and I, I wanted to build him this way, guy. I wanted to build him this way, how would the game play out for me? And then also if you're like, oh, I, I sucked ass going through that first playthrough, but now that I know what I'm doing, I'm ready to do it with my second playthrough. Whatever way you want to look at it, that's how it's played. That's how you really get the full experience. I don't really put, there's very few games I put in more 100 plus hours. The last game I put 100 plus hours was uh, Persona 4. Persona 4 Golden. Because I, that's just because I did exactly what I said. I was like, I don't like how I beat that game. I'm not satisfied with how I did it. Let me do it again. Now I'm playing New Game Plus. I got my bullshit out of the way, but that, but that's what I'm trying to say. Like, there's games that you need to play more than once through, and the replayability is there for Fallout. Not for me, but for everyone. There's, there's other people who can see it in other playthrough and could see a whole nother build and see all that kind of stuff. That's just what it does. And um, as far as the bug situation, I've kind of had this little bit of an itch with Bethesda, and if there's multiple people saying the bugs are there, the bugs are there. I just haven't ran into them. I'm not very really proud of them with that. That's one of my big irks with them. It's like, I feel like now Bethesda has gotten to the point now, and I'm not saying that reviewers don't see it, and I'm not saying that people don't see it. I'm talking about Bethesda themselves. I feel like they just think it's like, oh, it's cute. Like, oh, it's cute that they have all this in there. It's like, oh, that's just Bethesda. That's what I feel like they've gotten their title for. You can agree with me or not, that's how I view it. And honestly, I think as far as the bugs need to go, why are you not why aren't you putting that extra effort then to, to try and fix those? To do an a closed beta for certain people to just get those testers in there to try and make sure you find those flaws. You guys have this is a reoccurring issue. You guys need to be on top of this. And if there's bug crashing things, that's not good. That's not a good thing. That is bad. And that's what's knocking you from getting a 10. Or that's what's knocking you. Yeah, do you sit there and probably like, oh, we know we're going to sell a million copies. We know we're going to sell a million upon millions. <laughs> so, we, but, I mean, it's just bugs, fix it. That's just all I'm saying. Is the game shitty because of it? No. But that's what I'm saying. Fix it. Let's get our shit together, Bethesda. So, final thoughts on Fallout. Oh, I guess because you're the host, I'll go first. So, my final thoughts on Fallout 4. It's well on its way to being Game of the Year for me. In a very stacked year as well, so it's a very big accomplishment. Um, is it without its problems? No. There is not a perfect game by any means. I can see where the people are saying, like, oh, I was a little bored at this point. I can see where you're coming from. I can see... All of valid. There's, I, I don't like saying, oh, you're fucking stupid for saying that. So, is it a perfect game? No. Is it an amazing game? Yes. So far, is it deserving of like the nines and nine point fives? It's gotten yes. It's a masterpiece of a game. It's fucking amazing. So that's that's my view on it. It's just amazing. I can't wait to dump probably more than 150 hours into the game. With me, uh, I just want to kind of discuss that for me on the whole boring issues. See, the way I look at it, RPGs in general, JRPGs, Western RPGs, action RPGs, all that stuff, those games are all about putting in hours. And if there's ever a game that's an RPG that it doesn't come with a boring moment or a not so exciting moment, then let me please play it because that will probably be the greatest game I've ever played. Those games are like long shows. There's always going to be an episode that you're going to be like, ah, oh, it wasn't that great. It's not like the best part. There's not everything can be epic. Not everything can be Uncharted-esque when you get from an 8-hour game versus a 40 to 60 to 100-hour game. So all those games, of course, when you're walking to the next disc, to the next place to do this, isn't going to be that fun. It all depends on your style of game and how you look at it and what you want from it. So... There, yeah, is, is it weird that this game has a boring moment? No. I did see it having a boring moment. Not everything's going to be spectacular in a game like that where you they don't give you no guidance pretty much. They say do what you want to do, get there however you want to get there, and you might get frustrated and fall on a freaking mountain and then you're going to find a way up and then you're going to have to fast travel back to a place and it's going to frustrate you. 
that's what those all those things come with. I mean, you can't expect that to be something. That's what the point is. So, the whole boring thing. Let's be real. Unless you're saying I was doing missions and the missions just sucked, that's a whole nother aspect. But to sit there and say like, oh, there was this time when I was doing this and it was kind of boring. That comes with the territory with those kind of games. I played Final Fantasy VII and they had boring moments. I played Persona 4 and they had boring moments. So my point is that that's kind of a cop out reason to kind of say a game the game stinks for those kind of games in my opinion. Mm. How I feel about the whole game, I'm kind of where Nick, I know this game's a legacy. It's not 100% for me, but it's not something I will turn down. I wouldn't, would I have bought this game? Like, I have a connection with my brother. He bought the game. We have our PS4s connected. I probably wouldn't have. I will be brutally honest. Uh, it's not something I would have dropped $60 on as of right now. Who knows? Maybe it might change after I played it, and I would have been like, wow. So, right now, no, I probably wouldn't have dropped the money on it. Um, would it have been a game I might have picked up as it reduced in price? Maybe. Maybe sometime down the line I would have got it. But given that, like, Star Wars Battlefront where my, is where my heart's at as far as next game coming up. That's the game I want to play. This is just kind of a filler to that point. So whether I beat the game or whether I put the hours into it is entirely up to that. And whether I want to play, I might come back to it. Just like Metal Gear Solid Five, I still haven't beat that. But, like I said... The game is good. I can see why where it gets its pros. It's just not a hundred percent for me. That's all I can say, really. Yeah. So, this has been get hyped. We want you guys to get hyped. I think this game ended up being hyped as its hype lived up to the hype of it the hypeness. To me, yeah. It was very hyper. So, that's Fallout Four, and we're going to continue on. So next Tuesday. We're going to do, me and Nick are both getting it, we're going to do Battlefront, which will be the next one. So tune in next week, guys. And like I said, this isn't going to be every week. This is just a coincidence. Tune in for the big games. The big games that we know people want to hear. And also, we're going to be doing Nintendo Direct. That's coming out. We're going to be doing a podcast on that. We know you guys like our reactions on that. We've been seeing that we've been getting a lot of views on our convention uh, reactions. Mm -hmm. So... We're definitely going to give you that. Sorry we didn't do Blizzard. I didn't have the money to pay for it, plus I had to work. Nick had to work. It wasn't a good fit for us. And so a, I do love Blizzard, and I do love World of Warcraft, but um, sorry. People will survive. Yeah. We can't hit them all, but we'll try and hit them if we can. All right. Keep gaming, guys. Later. Keep gaming.